Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Daily Grace Podcast. This is Shelby, and I'm glad to be back with you this week for another episode in our When You Feel series. In this series, we're talking through common emotions that we as women feel, but maybe we don't take the time to pay attention to them or work through them. And our hope in this series is that each episode will help you slow down, consider the emotions that you have bubbling under the surface, and begin to work through them in a biblical and gospel-centered way. Emotions are a good thing. They're a God-given thing, and praise God, but he does not leave us alone to navigate them. Last week, we talked about feeling weak with Emily Jensen from Risen Motherhood, and today I have another very special guest with us to discuss feeling afraid of the future or afraid of what might be unknown ahead of us, and that is Ruth Cho Simons. Welcome, Ruth. We're glad to have you here. So glad to be here. Thanks, Shelby. Ruth, I don't know if you remember this because it was a few years ago now, but you were on the Daily Grace podcast for episode number 34, and now we're on episode like 261, so quite, oh, quite a bit of time, <laughs> quite a bit of time between those. Um, but in episode 34, you shared about your, beho- your book, Beholding and Becoming, and we're so glad to have you back today to chat about your recently released book, Pilgrim. 25 Ways God's Character Leads Us Onward. I love that title. That's such a good title. Thank you. (laughs) And so we're just going to chat about how knowing God's character helps us when we may feel afraid or unsure about what lies ahead of us. Um, But before we jump into that, Ruth, would you want to start by just telling us a little bit about you and what you do for people who might not be familiar with you yet? Yeah, um, I am an author and a watercolorist and a founder of GraceLace.com, um, where I still get to lead a small but mighty group of women as we take beauty and truth and pair my artwork with scripture and send it around the world in various forms. Um, I'm grateful to have authored several books, devotions and trade books, but it's always on topics that are meant to lead us to just a deeper walk with the Lord. And so um, I'm a mama to six boys and my oldest is 21 and my youngest is 10. So in previous seasons of life, I did a lot um, local ministry and continue to um, be very active in my local church here, but um, never really imagined that I would get an opportunity like this to take the very things that I talk about around my kitchen table and um, share it so broadly through writing and through public speaking and through the work that I do. So we live in Western Colorado where um, it's pretty rugged. My life is not full of butterflies and flowers. It's usually a lot of um, dirt bikes and motorcycles and and hiking and uh, a lot of dirt. And so it's it's fun to be a boy mom. Um, but yeah, that's what you see behind me on, on, on video here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, a couple of things to follow up on there. One, I don't have six boys, but I do have three. And so I feel like I'm, I might share a fraction of the boy mom experience <laughs> with you. And I can't agree, lots of dirt, even though we live in Texas. I think just boys and dirt go together. Like it's, sure. a natural, it's a natural connection. Maybe you can give me some advice on this because my oldest is 10, okay? And my youngest is three. And I feel like I'm already spending a fortune on groceries. So like, is it going to double when they become teenagers? Teenagers. It really does. It, it they really eat more than I ever expected. For real, <laughs> this but is not I good think news. <laughs> you can learn to, you know, I think just at a young age we learned to not always buy prepackaged food, and we did a lot of cooking together, and that obviously saves a lot of money. But one of my greatest joys in life, I mean, when you, when you ask me like, what are your greatest achievements? I usually don't think of you know my books. I think of the fact that all my boys cook and all of them Mm. clean. And um, when they cook, that means that they just know what to do with, you know, eggs, tortillas. They know what to do um, to make a big hearty meal out of a few simple ingredients. And so um, to start young, get them in the kitchen. That is a good tip. And I will receive that because I definitely want uh, to have boys who cook and clean and know all of those things. (laughs) Um, One other thing I was just going to comment on, you mentioned that you're a watercolorist and I just would encourage, we're going to have a link in the show notes to your new book, Pilgrim, but the cover is stunning. Um, And I'm sure the illustrations inside are just as much. And so it really is a joy to see both your writing and your uh, watercoloring side by side. It just, Thank you. It's, it's something unique and beautiful that I love about you as an author. 
Thank you. Well, let's get into talking about our topic for today. So you write about how our walk with Christ can feel like an unsure road. Many of us probably feel that way, but maybe we're even hesitant to say that out loud. Can you explain what you mean by unsure road? Yeah. You know, I think a lot of times we can know in our minds and our heads that if we are in Christ, then our future is secure. But every day I wake up and I still have to make decisions about what to say yes to, what to say no to, how to navigate a difficult or messy relationship, what to do when my kids are disobedient and I my day is waylaid by a really long conversation and breaking up fights. There's just so many, there are so many unknowns about our path the path before us. There are so many things that catch us off guard and the Lord doesn't promise us a future that um, is predictable. He promises to be with us. And yet every day I look for the predictability. I'm trying to find the way in which I can get from point A to point B and all the way to Z Mm -hmm. perfectly without a hitch and avoiding all discomfort, failure, or sadness, right? Do you ever feel that way where you kind of just want to be like, how do I get to where I want to go? without messing up, without anybody in my life being disappointed in me Mm -hmm. and turn out and for everything to turn out great. And so I think a lot of times that feeling of, wow, the road is unsure has more to do with a reflection on how we feel about controlling our lives rather than the truth of what it actually is. Our path ahead is not actually unsure. It's that Mm -hmm. we feel that way because we're so um, addicted to controlling our own lives. Mm, Yeah. So just as a follow-up to that, would you be willing to share about a season of uncertainty that you walked through in your life and kind of how you navigated that? Yeah. You know, even right around the time that I was beginning to write this, um, what is mostly like a devotional setup for Pilgrim, it's 25 shorter readings. But right around this time when I started this project, our family was navigating quite the unknown of wait, we had just moved to a new town as adults. Our kids were trying to find new friends. We were trying to figure out how to get um, settled in a local community, have a body of believers we'd be committed to. And so many of those things were not um, happening very Mm -hmm. easily. We were feeling very isolated, especially with my job and a lot of travel. It just became really, really difficult. It was also really difficult to run a business like Grace Laced from a headquarters that's located in the mountains. And so all those things, plus just the the aches and the turmoil of navigating changing seasons with children, having, mm. you know, young young adult children who are graduating from high school, moving on. And all these things were happening at the same time. And I remember crying out to the Lord and just saying, Lord, I, I don't know what to do. I literally don't know how to find the right people to hire. I don't know how to find a church that our family can really commit to. I don't know how to make friends as a middle-aged woman who um, is in new in a community. There's all There are so many little things that um, may seem like a really, really big deal um, one at a time, but all together really can like just like derail us. And I was feeling very mm-hmm. derailed in that season. So mm-hmm. um, in that particular season, I... I remember thinking Troy and I were, um, he was about to turn 50 and we were just in that season of going, seasons are changing for us and we don't know what's next and how to navigate this. And so like the recovering striver that I am, I immediately want to turn to, you know, how do I figure this out? How do I Mm -hmm. um, sign up for the right, um, you know, even an e-course or anything I could possibly do (laughs) to get this show on the road. And it wasn't found in the e-course and it wasn't found in um, reading just the right book. It ultimately was found in me resting in the Lord and turning my attention back to what things are not constantly changing in my life. And that Mm. really comes back to the scriptures and who God is. And really that's where Pilgrim kind of took off. Man, I love that. And you probably don't realize that you, the situation you just described is my actual current situation as well. We're just moved across the country four months ago, and it has been a struggle 
you know, just to yeah. plug into a church community. Yes. Like you said, making friends as an adult, that feels very complicated. <laughs> like I, I took for granted so, that. <laughs> but it really is, right? I took for granted the friendships that had formed organically, you know, sure. in our last in our last location. And so I resonate with a lot of what you're saying. And I'm really excited to hear everything else that you have to share with us. Um, you know, you've just mentioned feeling isolated. And I know that one thing that you've talked about before is that women often feel alone when they're walking into uncertainty. Why do you think it is that we feel alone in those times? Yeah. You know, we forget that we were made for one another. We were made for community. And so often when things get hard, we kind of pull away rather than jumping into community and saying, Hey, I would love to share with this entire group that I feel weak and fearful, and I don't know what I'm doing. And sometimes I feel like a bad mom. Like it's really hard to show up and say those things. Instead, we pull away and we go, um, I'm probably no good in this community unless I get my act together. So I'm going to just stand up. I'm going to stop going to Bible study or I'm going to stop going to church or whatever it is that we tend to want to do. We just pull away. And so I think a lot of times we feel isolated because it perhaps we're trying to figure out, um, we're trying to figure our lives out on our own apart from trusting the Lord and trusting the resources God's given us right around us and specifically mm -hmm. through people he's put in our lives. Yeah, you're stepping on my toes a little bit there. I think I felt <laughs> and thought all those things recently. Um, so let me ask this follow-up question to that. Then we feel alone, but <laughs> are we actually alone on our faith journey? Uh, you know, I, um, I had a Christmas devotional that came out last year called Emmanuel, and we know it literally means it's a name for Jesus, that he is God with us. And all year round, just not just at Christmas time, we can remember that God goes with us. And um, it's not just that he goes with us as in like, oh, just, you know, this idea of him, but that we are actually, um, we are the jars of clay. We are the vessel in which the Holy Spirit dwells and, and empowers us and is a friend to us and is our constant companion. And yet I think a lot of times, um, this is where I always think about A.W. Tozer's quote, where he says, the most important thing about somebody is what comes to their minds when they think about God. Because if I think about God as simply like somebody I tap into when I'm having a hard day, mm -hmm. then I'm not going to think of him as going with me. I'm going to think of him as a phone a friend, like, oh, I don't know what to do. So I guess I'll, if I think of God as somebody who's just trying to help me live the life that I want to live, then I start thinking of him as an assistant. And I only call him when I'm like, get me out of this situation. Get me on the next flight. I need to get home. Whatever it is, I like help me out. But if I think of God and I know him to be the very things that he describes of himself, holy, just, loving, sovereign, immutable, omnipresent, omniscient, um, did I already say merciful, faithful, deliver. <laughs> you can say merciful you know, twice I could, I could go on and on. But if I, if I start thinking of him one by one, by the characteristics that he describes of himself, then suddenly I walk through my day knowing that this God who is with me is all these other things that I am not, mm -hmm. I am not God. I am not merciful. Truly. I am not faithful. I am not the deliverer. I can't save myself. And I'm sure am not immutable. I change all the time. I am not consistent and unchanging and I'm not sovereign. I can't control everything. And so suddenly if I go through my life remembering and knowing who he is by what he says about himself, then my view of God is very accurate in my mind and how I respond to him will mm -hmm. be um, in truth and not in my own feelings that mm -hmm. may or may not be right. Yeah, no, I think that's so encouraging and such a good reminder. And I think we can so easily fall into what you said, thinking of the Lord like an assistant or someone that we call on in those times of trouble, but not remembering that he's constantly there with us and going before us. And so I think that that's super helpful. Um, what are a few of the ways that you remind yourself that you are not alone on this journey? Because I don't know, in, in those times where you're maybe struggling more than usual or, or afraid of the future or uncertain, um, it seems easier to fall back into the rut of what we've always done. Well, and so how do we continue to remind ourselves that we aren't alone, that he is with us? Yeah. The three, the three routines and rhythms in my life. One, I have a, I, I choose to make sure that I don't wait for the perfect time to talk to the Lord. So mm -hmm. I have a habit of really talking to him the moment that I wake up before I even get out of bed, when I'm already feeling like, 
I'm thinking about my to-do list, I start talking to him. And that's like a very personal Mm -hmm. me and the Lord. And so I I choose not to wait till perfect times or when, you know, the sun is out and I've got a perfect cup of tea and I can sit down for my quiet time. No, this is like, I got to talk to him at all times. The second thing that I think uh, that really guards my heart from feeling like I'm alone is I invite somebody else, somebody trusted and godly. Mm -hmm. And it could most, most of the time, 99% of the time, it will always be Troy, my husband, because I trust him and he is a godly um influence my life. But if you are not married and it might be your roommate, it might be your best friend, it might be your mentor, it might be your somebody in your community group, but invite somebody else into it. And so I am struggling with feeling like I have false narratives in my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking true thoughts about who I am and how I ended up where I am. I'm questioning this move. I'm struggling with lots of things in my life, but rather than sit there and only like let it go around and around in your brain, you speak it out and you say the truth to somebody else that can be trusted and ask them. And so would you please speak truth back to me? So yeah. that's part of my um, weekly, even daily rhythm. And then um, and thirdly, I, I really do put into practice this idea of preaching truth, preaching the gospel to myself. Mm-hmm. I really don't know any other way but to see the example of, um, especially the psalmist who oftentimes feels like, feels, you know, like he's all alone and he's running from danger and sadness and disappointment and betrayal. And what does he do? What does he say to himself? And I borrow those very words and I say it back to myself and I remind myself Mm. what is true about God. I love that your answer to that question wasn't like, well, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, like figure it out. (laughs) But it was relying on the Lord, asking others for help, and then finding comfort in the truths of scripture. Um, I think that in those seasons, we often put all the pressure on ourselves. Like you said, like, I'm just going to figure this out and I'm just going to fix it. And so I think that those tips are extremely helpful. Um, You know, I mentioned that I love your title. I love the use of the word onward in that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just such a compelling word. And so I'm just wondering if you can break down for us a little bit. What does it mean to follow God's path as he leads us onward? I think that's a question many women want answered. How do I follow God? And they desperately desire to do that, but they sometimes don't know how to live it out. You know, I, it was a deliberate choice not to say 25 ways God's character gets us to the finish line or Mm -hmm. causes us to succeed or 25 ways God's character helps us be our best. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, God's character leads us onward because all he asks of us is for us to walk step by step following him. You know, when we look at Psalm, 119, um, 105, you know, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. That is not about seeing 20 miles down the road. It's about literally trusting him for the visibility and for the the next step to take. Mm. And so I think about the word onward as an opportunity for each of us as sisters in Christ to remind each other that we don't need to figure out where we'll be in five years. We don't even need to have a perfect plan for next year or two months from now, what we need to be is we need to be good stewards of right now and to be obedient with the very next step he's asked us to take. And so a lot of times that's pressing into the Lord, trusting him, looking to his character, preaching truth back to ourselves, and then in faith saying, I've prayed about this. I've, I've sought your word on this. I've you know, asked for a godly counsel. And I'm going to take the next step because your word has illuminated just the very next thing I can do. I don't know that I'm going to do everything perfectly down the road, but I'll do the next right thing. Yeah, I think that's super encouraging. And I just want to pull out one thing you said. You said we don't need to know everything for the next five years. I feel like a lot of women listening and maybe myself included really need need that word, just the next right step. So, so you know, what if, just like you said, we we go to God's word, we are in prayer, we're receiving godly counsel, and we're like, all right, in faith, I'm taking this next step. But the road is really bumpy, That's and so it's really hard. Do you have any encouragement for us when we encounter that? Yeah. Have you ever noticed that um, we hear, we read and hear stories all the time of people going through the toughest and the hardest of trials, whether they you know, lived through a time of war or they, their family went through unthinkable um, pain and tragedy. And have you ever seen that people who, um, 
they can endure so much if their mindset is is one where they are fixated on what is compelling and truthful for them. So meaning, I guess what I'm trying to say, because I'm trying not to quote, I have a, I have a Nietzsche quote in my brain, but I don't have it in front of me and I don't want to misquote it. But basically even unbelievers know that what you think in your mind will ultimately affect the way you live. So the bottom line being our roads will be bumpy, but what God's given us it um, are the tools to be of sound mind and to mm-hmm. change our perspective. Meaning you could be on an uphill climb, but if you are so thrilled and excited and filled up in your soul, knowing that where you're going is where you will truly find home. If you know that like, oh, the end of this is actually so mm-hmm. worth it. The one I'm walking with is so worthy and I am empowered to do so. I don't need to feel um totally terrified at this, then suddenly even really, really long, hard days don't feel as long and hard. So what I'm saying is not, uh, let me back up and say, this is not a mind game. The point is not like, wow, just like change your perspective and and suddenly you'll have like this magical perspective and it'll be easy. That's not really my point, but my point is that life does, we're not promised that life will get easier. And so if you feel like you're on the bumpiest, hardest road, the truth is you probably could talk to the sister or the girlfriend right next to you, and she's probably going through the exact same thing. We're, we're all going through really difficult circumstances that we don't know how to navigate. We're going through trials that we didn't expect. We somehow find ourselves on the curve and on the bend of our life journey where suddenly we don't see where it's going. And we're like, I don't know what, how this is going to turn out. I'm not sure if my child was diagnosed with this. I don't know what that's going to look like in 10 years. I'm not sure how my husband's discouragement is going to turn out, you know, next year. I don't know how this longing of my heart to do something with all my giftings. When Lord, when is, when am I supposed to do that? These are all things that we don't have answers to. And yet if we feel trapped in the sense of, I will miss my best life so I got to figure it out, Mm -hmm. then you're probably going to be so miserable in the daily walking out of these circumstances. But if we can stop and say, well, you know, did I wake up and did I, did I wake up and cause myself to have breath? Did I actually cause the sunrise to happen? Am I the one who's keeping this house from crumbling and the food that's on this table? Like, are these all blessings because I'm so great? And when you start readjusting your mindset, then that's where you start realizing, I don't have to have all the answers for my difficult life circumstances right this minute, and I can still walk in joy. I can still walk in Mm -hmm. faith. And Shelby, I'm telling you this on a week where I confessed and admitted to my own smaller group of women that I'm struggling with joy. So I Mm want to be really honest and say, this is something we're fighting for. This is not Ruth Simons going, um... Oh, you know, if you just repeat these five truths to yourself, these five little mantras, and it'll be fine. And your Mm. mindset will be totally different. No, I'm saying as a sister in Christ to another, we're going to have to fight for it. Mm -hmm. And when we're really discouraged, it's not going to happen automatically. We have to actually come and address our hearts every day. Like the psalmist did in Psalms 42, you know, going, why so downcast? Oh, my soul, Mm -hmm. put your hope in God. And in Lamentations 3, when um, Jeremiah reminds himself and says, well, this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. And what Mm -hmm. is it? Well, it's something about God, the steadfast love of the Lord. So that's a Mm -hmm. long, drawn out answer to the question. But if I could leave our listeners with anything, it's that um, it's something that we have to persist in. It's Mm -hmm. not going to be a quick fix to our discouragement. Yeah. Yeah, I can so relate to that. I think we probably have all had seasons where just like fear and uncertainty has been almost paralyzing, you know, and I can I can definitely remember seasons like that as a young mom when you're just trying to figure everything out and you all of a sudden are overwhelmed with all the possibilities of what could go wrong, yeah. you know, and so I remember just it was so helpful for me to just like have a phrase that I could repeat when I found myself like spiraling in those thoughts and um, certainly scripture can be that phrase for whatever. For me, it was just a prayer that I prayed. Yes. And so I can remember just whenever I would, my mind would begin to spiral and what could happen. I would just say like, Lord, I thank you that that is not my reality today. But if it was, you would be with me through it. 
And it like brings me to tears because I have prayed that prayer just dozens and dozens of times, yes. you know, when those thoughts come. And so I don't know. I think just your, your honesty and vulnerability in that I think will be encouraging to many women who just face that same fear and those struggles on a day-to-day basis. That's a great prayer, Shelby. And I think we should all borrow that very prayer or versions of it as we read God's word. And it's possible mm-hmm. that we might even have a listener today joining us who's like, well, what if I feel so discouraged and so fearful and so shamed that I don't even go to God's word? And I'm just mm-hmm. kind of like, I don't even know the truth anymore. And I would just say to that sister, um, you can start with one small thing. You can just start mm-hmm. now. You don't have to go feast on the entirety of God's word by this afternoon. Start with the surrender of saying, Lord, kind of make a, I've kind of made a mess of my life with my worry and my fear and my controlling everything. I don't want to manipulate everything all the time. I want to trust you. Help me learn who Mm -hmm. you are. And um, obviously lots of resources can be of that help. And I hope that any of my books can be as well, but Mm -hmm. you can turn to the Psalms and see um, a songwriter who feels very much the same way that you and I just described, feeling fearful, unsure, not knowing the future and yet reminding himself what to do. Mm, Yeah. I love that. And you, you mentioned Psalm 119 earlier, which is one of my favorite Psalms. Um, but Psalm 119, 105 says the Bible, God's word is a lamp to our feet and a light for our path. So how can scripture help us stay on the path when maybe we feel discouraged or it feels bumpy? Yeah. I think a lot of times we think of God's word as like, unfortunately for some of us, um, I've heard many who have an upbringing where they feel like they have to check it off the list. It is something that they feel obligated to do. Others, I think, sometimes struggle with feeling like, I I should be able to read my Bible and know exactly what to do next. And I think it's such a good reminder. And um, I've recently had a conversation with my good friend, um, Jen Wilkin and Jada Edwards, who we both talked about theology and 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 Jen, you know, has that illustration she always gives of it's really like um putting a deposit when we're in God's word, not just like a debit card trying to get something out of it. Mm-hmm. And I think Jada likened it to like taking our vitamins. It's like just a daily regimen of saying, This is building a whole person up. And so when I think of Psalm 119, all of Psalm 119 pointing to the word, but specifically um, some of my favorite parts, it's hard to pick favorites, but you know, when we talk about this visual imagery of God's word being a lamp to our feet and a light for our path, I think about how um, he promises to illumine. He promises to light the way. He promises to direct and lead. But it also means that we have to stay awake to that. And we need to be aware, like, I will go to the Word and I will keep my eyes open to, to step out in obedience. This is not a total, you know, a faith where we just close our eyes and go, I guess I'm just going to do whatever, you know, plot me wherever you want me to be. But rather, oh, Lord, it's going to take some courage for me to see where you're leading me and to step out and follow you. And I think about also in Psalm 119, verse 9 through 15, you know, that passage starts with, how can a young man keep his way pure by guarding it according to your word? And so as sisters of Christ, how can any of us walk this path or keep the way before us pure and right and true? Well, we're guarding our daily walks with the Lord by going to the word. And this section ultimately um, ends with, um, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. And that verse uh, verse 15, yeah, it's actually through 16, verse 15, and I fix my eyes on your ways. That's what Ruth Simons needs all the time is that reminder of like, it's not my way, it's God's ways. Like, how has he worked throughout history? How is he working now? What does he show himself to be through his word? The same God that parted the sea is the same God who is actively at work in making a way in my life as well. And so, those are the things that I have to think about over and over again. I think he's still, even if uh, we don't see giant, you know, words written across the sky telling Shelby what to do, telling Ruth what to do next, what we see in his word is that he's changing our heart by saying, look, fix your eyes on who I am, 
how I've always been, how I've always been faithful. And then you can trust me today. Mm, I love that. And I think one thing that I especially love about Psalm 119 is tucked all throughout are these just like really honest prayers where it's like, help me keep your way. Help me understand yes. your word. Yes. Uh, help me treasure your law. And so I I remember reading through it and just thinking, oh my goodness, this person desires to yes. walk in this way. And to, but at the same time, like, Lord, I just really need your help because I don't always treasure your word. Yes. <laughs> I don't always live according to it. And so I love that we see just like the, the cry of their heart, but then the honesty about the state in which they're in and their reliance on the Lord. And so, man, just what a treasure Psalm 119 is. And I just love that we're getting the chance to talk about that today. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about God's character and there might be somebody listening who's thinking, okay, I think I vaguely know what that is, but I'm not, I'm not sure if I could define it for you. So do you have any tips if they want to grow in their understanding of God's character? Yeah. What we're really talking about when we talk about God's character is really just theology of God. It's the doctrine of God. Who is he? And sometimes we get overwhelmed at theology. I think um, friends at Daily Grace Co. probably love theology, and I know that to be true. So it's probably not stressful or overwhelming for this community. But sometimes, in, maybe for a sister listening in right now, she's like, oh, I'm somebody who feels like you'd have to go to seminary to be able to learn those things. And I think my heart and my goal has always been to make really deep truths a lot more tangible for mm -hmm. the everyday woman to be able to say, hey, I can apply this right now. So when we're talking about the character of God, we are talking about his attributes, but we're also talking about his ways. We're talking about the way he saves us or the way he glorifies himself, the way he is merciful or how he is a deliverer or why is it that he is sovereign and good mm -hmm. and faithful and just? Those things are not in competition with one another. They all work together in the attributes of God and in his ways. And so um, you know, in Pilgrim, you'll find 25, not just singularly attributes of God, but attributes plus the way he works in our lives in relationship to him. Mm, yeah, I love that. And thank you for explaining that so well. And I do think that understanding God's attributes or beginning to dive into that and especially applying that to the way that we read and understand scripture is transformational. And sure. so I'm so excited that you've written this devotional. I think it's going to be hugely helpful to many of the women who go through it. Um, let me kind of close. We have two more questions to close out here. The first one is the next time that the path before us feels unsure or we feel afraid or alone in the face of uncertainty, what do you want us to remember? I want all of us to remember that we are not without resources. That as women, when you immediately feel this fight or flight sense and almost the sense of, if I don't do it, nobody else will, or I have to save the day, or I have to immediately sit down and write out a five-year plan to get us out of the situation that we are in or I'm in, whatever it is, when you feel this, this fearful sense that you have to be the source of the salvation that you're looking for. Remind yourself of the gospel and remind yourself that you could never save yourself, that we were never meant to, and we were never capable of saving ourselves in the first place. So when you're fearful, trace that fear. And I know, I know a wonderful counselor, but I'll just say, this is what I do. I start with a fear, whether it's, I have no friends, I'm not a great mom, or my kids are going to turn out crazy, or um, what if nobody ever knows how much I care about such and such because I don't know how to communicate those things or whatever it is that we feel like we're lacking in our lives. Start with a fear and work your way back and say, what is the root? Like, what is the root? What is the root longing? And what is the root issue that you're not trusting God for? And almost every single time you can just like, Take a little trail back all the way to, wow, I'm lashing out right now in this fear because I'm scared that um, I'm going to disappoint people in my life. Or on the other side, I don't trust God for my, I don't fully trust God for my sense of approval or self-worth. And so therefore, I have to make sure that nobody's disappointed in me. Do you see how those two things work mm -hmm. together? So every time you start with your fear, you can trace your way back to what is it that I think I'm most longing for and most fearful I won't have? 
And then what am I not trusting God for? Because those things usually go together, causing that immense, overwhelming fear. Mm -hmm. And then that's a good time to, again, talk to the Lord about it, share it with a friend that you can trust that's that's godly, pointing you to the word, and then go to the word and study what he says about that so that you can preach it back to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so helpful, so practical. Might even be a good idea for, you know, when this podcast ends, just leave your earbuds in, you know, all the people around you will think you're still busy and you can just have a little moment to, to pray through that, to consider those things and um, then maybe tell a friend. But thank you, Ruth, so much for that. You know, our last question is one that we ask every guest who comes on the podcast. And so at the Daily Grace Co., we always say that the gospel changes everything. And Ruth, we would love to know what has the gospel changed for you? So much. But the one thing that I know um, every day, I thank the Lord that the gospel has made it possible for me to be fueled by grace and not fear. I think um, I've written about this before, but I am a recovering striver who definitely grew up thinking that my worth had to be found in what I achieve or what I accomplish or what other people think of me. And so every single day, um, I realize that it is the grace of God laced through my life, which is why my ministry and my work is called Grace Laced, to ultimately um, empower me to live and step into the very things that God's given me to do, not fueled by my own strengths or talents, but fueled by the grace of God that enables me to be all that much more than I can ask or imagine Ephesians 3, right? That we can ultimately step into God-given tasks and God-given callings because it's Him that powers us. Mm, yes. And all the strivers said amen <laughs> to that. <laughs> uh, Ruth, thank you so much for joining us today on the Daily Grace Podcast. We will be sure to include links to Grace Laced, to your brand new book, Pilgrim, as well as all the other ways that people can connect with you on your website and social media in the show notes. It has just been a joy to chat with you about this today. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. And to all of our listeners, don't forget to subscribe to our weekly newsletter. That's just a way for you to know what's going on on the podcast, what's happening this week and what will be happening next week. You can click on the link in the show notes to subscribe. Until next week, you can also come join us over on Instagram at Daily Grace Podcast. So long for now. We'll see you next week. <laughs>